Welcome back. Now, let's continue. We are doing equivalent forms, and we've done fractions to decimals and vice versa. Now, we are going to do decimals, converting decimals to percentages, and percentages back to decimals. That's what we'll be doing now. Our first is to, our first decimal is 0 0.8, and we are to convert it into a percentage. How do we do that? Here's the method. There is only one decimal after the comma, so our denominator must be 10, so it will be 0 0.8, which equals to 8 tenths. Because we are looking for a percentage, it is important that our denominator becomes a hundred. So we must change the common fraction into an equivalent form or equivalent fraction with a denominator of a hundred because the percentage is out of a hundred. And so 0 0.8, having changed it to eight tenths, we now multiply by 10 tenths. Remember, we multiply with a fraction that has the same denominator and numerator. And 8 multiplied by 10 then becomes 80, and then 10 multiplied by 10 becomes 100. Because it is now 100, therefore that value of the numerator is our percentage. So it is 80%. Our first example then would be convert 1,75 into a percentage. So 1 is a whole, and 75 divided by the 100 is the fraction. So when we write it, again, we remember that 1 is 100 divided by 100 plus 75 divided by 100. So we deal with that one as a percentage. That is the one we're going to deal with. So it then becomes, we've, because it's divided by 100, it becomes 75%. And this one, because it is 100 already, that makes it 100. And that 175, so this is 100%. This is 75%. You add the two, it is 175%. That's what we are doing. All right? Now, the reverse process, where we are given a percentage and we are to change it into a decimal. The method that we are using there is we must rewrite the percentage as a common fraction first because it helps us to understand that part. And then also our denominator must be a hundred because that hundred goes with the sign of a percentage. Now, 72%, which is what we are given, is 72 hundredths. And that is the first example. The second one, we are to convert 25,5% into a decimal fraction. Again, we need to realize that 25 is what we are dealing with, 25,5, because of that sign, is divided by 100. Then... What we may have, let me remove this there. All right, it's divided by 100 because of that sign of the percentage. Now that I have that and I have a comma there, I can eliminate the comma by multiplying by 10 divided by 10 to make that a whole number. So 25,5 multiplied by 10 then becomes 255. 100 multiplied by 10 then becomes 8,000. Writing that as a decimal then is 0, 0,255. That then is our decimal fraction. All right, let's move on. We are now going to the part where we, we've started with fractions to decimals and then decimals to percentages. Now the last part would be percentages converted to fractions and vice versa. The first one is 10% written as a common fraction and simplifying our answer. And in this case, the method that we're going to refer to would be 
rewrite the percentage as a common fraction. Again, it's the same thing that we are talking about that when it's common fractions, we're able to understand what they are about. So 10%, we then divide it by a denominator of 100. Then it becomes 10 hundredths. And because of that sign, we divide by 100. That percentage sign, we divide by 100. Now, to simplify the fraction, we then divide it by 10 tenths. So that 10 divided by 10 becomes 1. And 100 divided by 10 becomes 10. So that becomes our final fraction. Answer has been simplified. But always remember, that a percentage is calculated with a denominator of 100. So whenever you're working with percentages, remember that. All right, now we have to rewrite 37,5% as a fraction. Again, remember the sign represents a denominator of 100. So it's 37,5 divided by the 100. So that is our fraction. However, you realize that there is a comma, so we need to multiply. To eliminate the comma, we multiply it by 10 tenths. And that gives us 375 divided by 1,000. Now let's write this in the simplest form. We divide the numerator and denominator by 125. And that gives us three-eighths. So now that is in the simplest form. So 37,5% can be represented as three-eighths in, in fraction form. Let's move on to the next one. All right. So that is now our fraction. Now let's look at the reverse process where we are given a fraction and we are to convert it to a percentage. What should we do? One, when we convert it to a percentage, always convert the common fraction to a denominator of 100 because that 100 helps us to interpret the percentage. Here's one, three-fifths multiplied by 20 twentieths. 3 multiplied by 20 then becomes 60, and 5 multiplied by 20 becomes the 100. Because our denominator is 100, the numerator then becomes the percentage. So that 60 then becomes 60%. Our next fraction then is 5 eighths that we are to write as a percentage. 5 eighths there isn't a number that we can multiply with to get us a hundred as a denominator. Remember, our intention is to find a denominator that is a hundred in order to convert it to a percentage. So in this instant, we need to find a number that we can multiply with that would give us a denominator. So we're going to choose a, a thousand instead. So a number that we can multiply eight with to get a thousand is 125. And the numerator and the denominator must be the same. So 5 multiplied by 125, we can use our calculator for that one. 125 multiplied by 5 would give us 625. And our denominator, 125 multiplied by 8, then is 8,000. So we've converted that fraction now into 625,000th. And then with that, we now have to work back and divide it by 10 divided by 10 so that we get our denominator into a hundred. And that then means it would be 62,5 divided by a hundred. Because it is now a divided by a denominator of 100, then it becomes 62,5%. So each time we work with that, that's the outcome that's going to be. We've come to the end of our lesson for today.
Thank you for joining me. I hope you now understand how to convert decimals to fractions, fractions to percentages, and vice versa. Do more practice it wherever you are and be able to understand further. Thank you. Bye.